If you have been here on YouTube for a while, you probably would know who Peter McKinnon is. If you especially like stumbled upon photo, video, tutorials, camera basics, all of that kind of stuff. And if you don't know who he is, you probably live under a rock. Hope you guys are doing great and so am I and if this is your first time on this channel my name is Eid Kataria and I'm a first year computer science student and computer science usually takes about 60% of my time I mean at this point it pretty much takes like 0% of my time because I'm in first year of engineering and in first year of engineering it is common you don't like get to learn computer science as much it is actually from the second year but anyways that actually takes about 60% of my time but the other 40% of my time is someone who wants to be a filmmaker and all of that kind of stuff who loves just editing you know and that's the reason I probably started this YouTube channel as well so Casey Neistat was the one who got me started into filmmaking and I have made a video about that I'll link it up in here also down in the description and if you have watched that video you exactly know what I'm talking about but once I got started one of the biggest challenges that I had was the fact that like heck no I don't know anything about filmmaking whether you talk about editing cameras filming storytelling scripting i mean nothing zero i have zero idea about that so i just hopped onto youtube and started searching and just browsing around you know learning about the camera basic what like tutorials and like what editing softwares and all of that kind of stuff that i really needed to get started in this world of youtube filmmaking all of that kind of stuff so i was there on youtube and as far as i remember it was back in the late 2017 or early 2018 and that is when I discovered Peter McKinnon and that absolutely changed my life. I didn't just discover what software and what like tools I would be using. I discovered somebody who is like the absolute professional at all of these things. And that was absolutely amazing. And since then, there's just so much that I've learned. And to be honest, I think almost everything because everything that I learned after that was a byproduct of what I learned in the beginning. So in that context, I pretty much learned everything from Peter McKinnon. So here are seven things that I've learned from Peter McKinnon over these years. And maybe as a creator, as a filmmaker, as a content creator, YouTuber, whatever you are, that might help you. So here are the seven things that I've learned from Peter McKinnon. Number one. Quality and quantity can be both implemented at the same time. If you look at Peter McKinnon, I mean, the guy is an absolute beast. He went from zero to a million subscribers in just nine months, which is ridiculous. And of course, it happened because he was in the filmmaking photography niche for more than a decade. And this is something that is very underrated and something that not many people really look at. People often saw him as like the overnight success kind of thing which is absolutely ridiculous but when you look at his older videos i mean they were great but if you look at his videos i mean right now they're nowhere as close to what he was doing before in his first year of making youtube videos he made probably around 180 videos which is kind of ridiculous and as you go through those 180 videos or the stuff that you did in the very first year of starting a youtube channel the content just evolved exponentially i mean this is something that i've seen nowhere a plethora of people on the internet and everywhere else kind of like have this misconception that if you focus on the quantity the quality will drop which is somewhat true but somewhat false as well and here's what i mean by that because when you focus on the quantity the quality might not be as good in the beginning and that's the reason that statement is true but but that statement is false because if you just focus on quantity you won't be like surrounded by this idea of perfectionism imposter syndrome procrastination and you know all of those weird things because in the long run when you just keep creating and just churning out videos the quality just goes up like exponentially because you are getting good at storytelling you are getting good at filming videos editing them color grading them like making the sfx choosing the music everything that is involved with making youtube videos number two Forget about criticism and focus on creation. When you start creating content, you kind of like tend to get criticized by a decent amount of people, which is not something that is new. It always happened since the beginning of creation of things. And that really happens because the people that are out there to criticize you are pretty much hollow from the inside because they have nothing good to offer. And because they have nothing good to offer, they might as well start criticizing others who are doing something. And just something that he gave as a message in his video, a message for creators, I think that's what it was titled. And here's what he said. Let's say you're trying to make this into a living or you want to make money from this or you just want to be recognized or you want to get more followers or you want to gain some more recognition maybe you want to be published maybe you want to win a competition maybe you just want to put your stuff in an art show or an exhibit you're never going to get anywhere 
if you don't just start putting your work out there. Not everybody's gonna like it. You're gonna get people who tell you you suck and what you're doing is garbage and it's nonsense and it means nothing. Forget what those people say. Does not matter at all. One of my friends, Daniel, told me once, if nobody hates you, you're probably doing it wrong. And that's just the case. There's all kinds of trolls on the internet. If you're an artist, it comes with the job, you know? These people don't have creativity, so they spread what they have to offer, which is negativity, in hopes to bring you down. That's their contribution to society. And if anything, we shouldn't be offended by it. We shouldn't be hurt by it, even though a lot of the things that are said can be hurtful. If anything, we should feel sorry and pity for these people because all they have to contribute is just negativity. And think about what it is to live like that. That's miserable. Write mean shit on the internet. I mean, fucking <laughs> learn to cook, just anything. They don't have what it takes to put the work out there, but you do. They don't have what it takes to go out and create something and make something and put it on the internet and open themselves up to being vulnerable, to just put art out there for the world to experience. Not everyone's gonna like it. You know, you go see a movie, you might not like it, your friend might like it. You might love it, your girlfriend hates it. Your boyfriend loves it, you hate it. So it's subjective, art is subjective. That's the best part about it. It's not for everybody. So don't be discouraged by the people telling you, you're a complete idiot, I can't believe you did that. This video is complete garbage, it's shit, you suck. That's fine, like whatever. You're the one sitting here putting in the work, putting that art out there into the world, and that, is what's gonna open doors. Pick up whatever it is that you use as your medium. If it's a paintbrush, if it's a pencil, if it's a microphone, a camera, whatever it is, pick up that device, that object, and just start creating with it. So number three, aesthetics matter. If you look at Peter McKinnon's video and all of the content that he's doing, you might as well see that there are so many things and small tiny little elements that not many people might as well even notice. But Peter McKinnon is doing them at his level best. For example, a title animation. Most people won't even notice that, most people won't even see that. But Peter McKinnon is the kind of person who would spend like hours, if not, I don't even know, days, because even as a professional thinking about it, you might as well have to spend multiple hours inside of After Effects, trying to figure out things, messing with everything, you know, messing with the fonts, messing with the size, messing with the tracking, messing with the line spacing, all of those things just to perfect that like title animation. But I mean, the majority of the people won't even focus on that. But his philosophy or psychology has been that if you focus on creating something that you really love, even if the people don't even acknowledge it, your skill will grow exponentially as a creator. And he's the kind of person who might as well like spend multiple hours perfecting something, even if the people don't notice it. And this is one of the best qualities about him. Number four, people are watching you for you. A lot of people who want to start YouTube or filmmaking or anything new, they're often fooled with this idea that their life is not interesting enough. And they're kind of like trapped in this imposter syndrome that they're not good enough and why would people even watch them? They don't see a reason that people would really watch them. But your personality is literally everything and the only reason why people are watching you. And this is a message that he gave in his video, How to Vlog. I think that's what it was titled. And here's what he said. There's no rule book. There's no blanket statements. There's no... Do these things and you will make successful vlogs that everybody loves that are tons of fun. That doesn't exist. It solely depends on you. Your personality is more important than doing fun things like jumping out of a plane or doing fun things like ripping a Lamborghini around a racetrack in Monaco. Those are all awesome things to do and they make great vlog content. But you take the person out of that situation that is the vlogger, you take the vlogger out of those fun scenarios and all you have is just an emotionless commercial that you just flip through on TV. If you look at it this way, a picture like just a random TV commercial, right? Let's just say it's some dude riding a, a Sea-Doo around and whatever, he's just showing off this new 2018 model and it's, ah. Nobody cares, you flip through it, you forget about it, the day goes on, you don't give that another second thought until maybe you see it again on a rerun. 
but you throw your favorite vlogger on that Sea-Doo and now watch the commercial, it's totally different. And it's not because your favorite vlogger is riding a Sea-Doo, it's because that's your favorite vlogger and you're interested in that person. You're interested in what she's doing. You're interested in what he's doing, not the fact that it's a Sea-Doo. So the giant misconception that I feel is people don't want to start vlogs because they think to themselves, I don't have an interesting enough life to vlog. I don't do fun things like that. I don't travel. I live in the middle of nowhere. But those are all things that do not matter because you are the story. Number five, editing is everything you don't see. There are just so many things, I mean, infinite many things that he does that people don't even notice, as I mentioned, because the things that he is doing, I think they're absolutely perfect. I mean, and he was like the only person that changed my perception, you can say, about YouTube videos and editing YouTube videos, because he was the first person that I saw that had an eye for like the transitions, the title animations, and like the motion graphics overall, just perfecting every little detail. And that kind of like changed my perception about YouTube videos because nobody had ever made content that was that polished and it looked absolutely amazing. They are just so smoothly and perfectly done that you can't even tell that they were actually done. And that, my friend, is the real editing. Editing is not about having the coolest VFX and having like a CGI in the background or anything crazy like that. Editing is simply everything that people won't even see. Number six, you can be good at multiple things. There's like this common misconception that has been floating around for decades if not centuries that you cannot be good at everything and that is something that we were taught ever since we were kids because we were made to choose one specific profession that is like told that you're supposed to do only that one thing and you can't do anything else but specifically speaking for me i'm also interested in like programming you know software all of that stuff and on the other end i'm also interested in like various elements of filmmaking so i always like was told by a lot of people that you can't be good at everything. But Peter McKinnon was the person that made me realize that you can be good at everything. Well, if you look at Peter McKinnon, he's that kind of person who is good at photography, good at cinematography, who is good at video editing, motion graphics, SFX, all of that good stuff, even like storytelling, choosing the sound design. He was also a magician. If you know what I'm talking about, if you have watched like old Peter McKinnon's videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He did this like crazy card tricks, like snapping cards into half, so something crazy like that. But the idea here is that you can be good at a lot of things, possibly everything that you want to do, if you are willing to stay with it and practice that specific art for years. Because you might just look at him and be like, oh, his stuff is perfect and I can't do that. But the reality is that he has spent more than a decade and still counting and he is doing all of those things. Number seven, numbers don't matter. I personally think that it's a wrong parameter to judge yourself. We are often made to think that more numbers are actually better. Well, that's actually not true. Because having more numbers, whether it's on YouTube talking about more subscribers, more views, more money, all of that stuff might make you happy in a certain way, might provide you with like a financial security, but that does not guarantee that you will grow as a creator. And this is a message that he gave in his video, Do You Even Matter? I think that's what it was titled. And here's what he had to say. Do I even even matter. You see, a lot of people, I'm gonna take my glasses off for this actually. You see, a lot of people get into this for the wrong reasons, or once they're in it, they use the wrong tool to evaluate their success, and that is the numbers. Yes, the more numbers that you accrue with Instagram and subscribers on YouTube and Twitch and Twitter and Facebook and all of that, more numbers mean the more likely you are able to make a career out of this. But in no way, in absolutely no question, no way, it does not mean that you are any less than anybody that has higher subscribers, higher follower counts, anything like that than you. I have 2.2 million subscribers here on YouTube. I have a, a larger pedestal to reach a larger audience. That does not mean that I as a person, as a creator, as an artist am any better than you if let's say you have 500 subscribers. The difference in numbers there in no way describes my worth being better than yours. But I feel the common misconception is someone seeing a YouTuber or an Instagrammer that has a massive following and they look at their own following and they think to themselves, do I even matter? Like, why do I even bother making this video? Like, is anyone gonna see it? Who, who even cares? So when people use numbers to compare their worth to someone with higher numbers, it really discourages me because we're better than that. We're all equal. 
We're all passionate about something. We're all creative about something. And we all just want to coexist doing what we love. So that's it from my side. If you made it this far, make sure you guys like the video. That tells me that you're full of energy and you're pumped. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.